Hey everybody, we're here with Sean, and uh, as I teased you a little bit, we've got an awesome new process that he and the systems team have been working on uh, for the last few months. We think it's ready to roll out, and so we're going to be going over our new paperless PAR order form in Field Service Lightning. So Sean, uh, thanks for taking the time to come meet with me and talk about this. Um, what have you got for us? Yeah, sure. Uh, happy to be here. Happy to be able to help you guys. Hopefully make this a little bit smoother of a process for you. Uh, less lag time in sending things in. Uh, so uh, let me just go over real quick here. Um, you're basically going to be filling out a form, uh, much like you do with uh, your daily jobs. Um, I have here on my screen a copy of, you know, the back end flow of what it looks like. Um, it's basically pulling up, you know, your user record. Uh, and then it's going to go through here and it's going to ask you, um, you know, several screens, um, what you're looking for, dates needed by, and then you can select different categories of parts you want to you want to order. Um, after you go to a screen with a set of parts, uh, it won't let you go back and redo it. Um, that's because it's creating the uh, product request items as you go along. Um, so it's important that, you know, as we're going through, we don't click next until we're confident that we're good on that page. Um, I won't let you go back because then you don't want to overwrite it or, or duplicate it. So uh, after you're done, it'll bring you back in here. Um, it'll show you a list of the exchangeable parts that you would need to ship back. Uh, and then it'll submit the request and email you a copy of a confirmation of basically all the parts that you could order and what you ordered. Uh, after that, it will go over from Salesforce into NetSuite for production to be able to see it. Um, and there's two different lists here. Um, there's going to be an, a list here for the orders that are due um, so they can see basically where they're at and how many they have outstanding. And then there's a separate search over here for them uh, for parts that they're waiting exchanges for. Uh, so they can kind of keep track of what they still need to send out or, or if you guys haven't really been sending the parts back, they'll have a list of what exactly they need from you uh, to hopefully help make it a little bit easier for them. Uh, so with that, you want me to run through one here on my computer? Well, real quick, let's uh, let's jump back to this, um, just so we because that was a lot of great information. It was also yeah. very quick. Yes. <laughs> so rapid fire, Sean. I love. I'm sure everybody appreciates that to my usual verboseness. Um, but it was a lot to unpack there. So let's uh, kind of dig into it just a little bit before we get there. Um, so when they're filling out this form, they're able. Uh, we've got the parts put into different sublists that they can click right, to different tools, screens. miscellaneous, plumbing parts. Right. Uh, but if they, if they select one of those sublists, they need to select everything on that sublist that they're going to need because they can't go back to add things to, on, that, uh, to that order. Yes. Um, so if they miss something, that's okay. They're going to get a report of what they ordered. They realize they missed something. They can submit an additional order. They just can't edit the order that they're Correct. working on. Um, so they want to be real sure they've they've checked that list well and they're not missing something that they, they intended to yeah, order. Yeah, and, and we'll go through it on your phone, but it's basically, it'll show you a list of each part and next to it, you'll have a field where you can enter a quantity right. for it. And it'll error out if you enter a number over the par limit. Uh, so say the par limit's 10, you put 15, it'll error and say, you know, the par limit for this item is 10. You have to go back and change it. Okay. Um, so it won't let you move forward if your number is right. over the par limit. Okay. Good. And so in the in the past, they, if they had more than the par limit, they would CC me on it, and I would approve it or decline it. Um, but now it's just going to be automated in there. It's going to automatically decline it. So if they need more than that, they need to uh, submit an additional order or reach out to their operations manager and Correct. say, "Hey, I've, I've got a problem, um, or I need I need more of these rushed or or whatever." Um, and then uh, you mentioned that this is all going to go into lists for production. Uh, so guys. Um, right now, production isn't going to ship an exchangeable part until they've received the exchangeable part uh, as they've been doing uh, for the, 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 what you're used to in, in the past. Um, my hope is that if you all are staying on top of this and getting your parts in reliably and quickly, um, that we might open that up a bit. Uh, we've got a, it's a different process that would have to be built, but we might open that up a bit. Uh, to where they're going to start shipping that stuff when they receive the order. And as long as you guys are continue to get your exchangeable parts in in a timely manner, uh, you should be able to get your new parts much sooner. So <clears throat> stay on top of that. Get those exchangeable parts in so the production doesn't have any sort of lag. The big problem is if you're, you're taking 
uh, inventory and you're not shipping exchangeable stuff back, uh, we run out of things to remanufacture in the, in the office and we have to order new materials. Uh, and so that obviously increases our costs. It makes it harder for us to get parts to other technicians, either in your territory or another. So get those exchangeable parts in, but this should speed up the ordering process and the fulfillment process and get things to you faster. Um, so Sean, yeah, let's, uh, what, what did I miss in, in all that? Um, um, uh, I don't think you really missed anything. Uh, for the most part, the Salesforce side is instantaneous. There's about a 15 to 30 minute delay in between Salesforce and NetSuite. Um, so if you try to call production immediately after, they probably won't have it just that second. Right. Um, but other than that, it should be fairly smooth sure. process. Yeah, generally by the end of the day, for sure, the order the should be getting fulfilled uh, rather than it being on next, the oh. next day's email list. <laughs> you have to talk about production on that. <laughs> <laughs> I can only handle it getting to them. <laughs> Very good. All right, yeah, let's, let's take a look at this order process. Okay. So you want to do it on your phone? Or? Um, if you want to do it on your computer, I'll just do it afterwards. Okay. On, uh, all right, so right here, uh, it's obviously gonna look a little different on my computer than it will on your phone, because um, I'm gonna be running it in debug mode here. Um, so you won't see this first screen here. Um, it'll pop up with this. Uh, you basically pick a date needed by. Um, so I'm gonna pick next Wednesday. Uh, and then you'll start off with you know your categories of what you wanna do. Um, so first here, I'm gonna pick controllers. I'll go through and hit next. Um, let me put like three here for SPC. I could put zero here if I wanted to. You don't need to. Uh, you can leave it blank. Um, and if I try to go to level sensors, uh, it'll bring me here. You know, I can enter whatever numbers I want. If I try to go back to controllers here, it should stop me from saying you've already entered that. Uh, it's already been chosen and entered. Please choose a different category. Um, so I'm going to pick, uh, maybe I'll pick PPE, and if I want to pick something that has, let me put 50 in here. Par limit should be, yep, par limit is 1 here, so it's not going to let me go forward unless I click on a number that is under that limit. Um, so I can click next, uh, I pick tools. And go ahead, and I'm just I'm just entering random values in here, mm -hmm. um, so that you'll be able to see. Drill should be an exchangeable part. Controller is. Um, what is something that is not? The tubing and tubing fittings section will have most of them. Okay, let's pick tubing and tubing fittings. So, pick some random ones here. All right, and then when you're done, you basically leave the other category to none, and you click on next, and it should bring you to, oh, part limit is one. There you go. <laughs> Preventing me from ordering more than that. It'll bring me to these exchangeable parts. Uh, the ones that I chose that were exchangeable was the SPC controller, uh, the tank link, and the drill. Uh, the tubing and other such uh, items were not exchangeable, so they're not going to show up on this list for you guys to, you know, send back in. Uh, so if I click next, that'll complete the process. It'll mark that uh, product request instead of being a draft, which won't go anywhere, to submitted, which will then force it to push over into NetSuite. It's very important that you make it to the end step there, because until you finish that flow, it won't submit. Uh, one clear identification of, of it submitting here is you should receive an email uh, with a confirmation. So right here, it's just gonna list all the parts uh, and basically the values that I entered for each one. So you can see SPC, I entered three, WTC, zero. Uh, most of them are, are blank. Uh, and we will work on getting this email um, in a better format moving forward, but this was the only way I could get it working right at this time. Um, a little hard to look at, but it, it might also give you guys uh, you know, an option of like, hey, you know what, I see this on this list, I meant to order that, I didn't order that. Right. So let me go back and, and submit a new one. Yeah, better to show the zero next to the thing they thought they ordered rather than to not have it on the list and not or think about it. Or yeah. blank, yeah. Um, so that's what that's gonna look like here. Um, I can speed up the process of pushing it over into 
the NetSuite um, manually here uh, so that we don't have to wait a long time. This is basically the list in NetSuite. Uh, I'll refresh it, you can see there's nothing on that one and there's nothing on this exchangeable part list for them yet. Um, but then if I click, I'm just gonna run this flow mm -hmm. so that it forces it. And you could just do that 24 seven, right? Sit there and wait for our orders to come in and push them through? Oh, absolutely, I could. <laughs> I won't. <laughs> but if something does happen and Aquasol says they don't have it or anything like that, um, just bring it up to me and, and I can check to make sure that if it hasn't come over. But give it, give it, give it an hour. If it's uh, yeah, an hour should be plenty of time. Yeah. Uh, it runs every 15 minutes. Um, yeah. So this will take just a few minutes probably to run. Okay. While they're doing that, or while you're, you're pushing that out, see if you can push me through not messing this up. I'm going to record my screen. I guess I could show here too the uh, product request, what it looks like in Salesforce. Um, I'm just gonna look. A little something like this, it's got my name on it. Uh, it picks the employee and the location of where that tech is. Uh, it's product order. Um, and you can see the status is submitted and it's got a date on there. Um, and then if I click on related, you can see all the line items of uh, yeah. what I requested and the amounts that I requested from each one. Oh, sweet. Um, and you can see the status has submitted. If it, if it says draft or anything like that, it means it hasn't gone through yet and completed that process. All right, cool. So looking at the uh, user interface they're used to on the phone, uh, I'm at the, the start screen basically, our schedule. Where am I going to be able to do this? All right, so I think you're going into Actions. I think I had it on US for me. Do I need to have a schedule to see it? Uh, possibly. Let's see. So if I am here, let's say I click on this guy. So now if I go up on actions. I think I have it as Macaulay test still. Right. Um, for now, but we'll change that we'll once change we're ready. That. To yeah, so we'll, we'll make it par order. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll make it par order. Um, so date needed by, I'm gonna select Wednesday, oh. and then part category, I'm gonna do billable items, because I love billable items. I bet you do. <laughs> I've seen the expense reports done. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks. <laughs> and we'll do two skimmer baskets. Hey, I'm turning a profit this year. <laughs> And we'll go to uh, locks. So we've got our different types of locks and lock boxes on here. I'm gonna get a long shank and a lock box key. And then jump over to manuals. And check that out, I can get a test kit guide or an Aquasol manual. Um, is there any way we can make it where it is going to automatically raise up the number pad rather than yeah, so the it's, QWERTY? It's on, on there as a number field. Yeah. So it might just be my phone is doing that instead of the. I don't. I don't know if I'll have the ability to change that. I just know so, a lot of times when it's restricted to a number field, it only it brings yeah, up the so number. Yeah, you can see here pad. these are all number fields. Yeah. Um, but uh, decimal places, it doesn't allow me anywhere to really yeah. force the phone into a, which it's, is annoying. Yeah, but it's, it's weird because other, other forms in, in FSL do that where it only where it brings up the number pad. So maybe it's just my phone, um, but either way. Cool, shock drug zip ties, 10. Oh, missing required fields. I'm going to, uh, well, I had none as the other parts category. And, oh, it did, it did work this time, okay. And now we change the parts, nice, sweet. So 
Uh, looks like everything went through here, so let me just refresh this NetSuite search. Uh, you'll see here now that there's one uh, tech inventory order for production to look at and process. Uh, I can open it up here. Uh, it's got my name on it, type of order is tech inventory order. It's got you know the employee, which is myself, and a location on there with a date. Um, and then you can see here the parts are listed underneath with uh, quantities next to them. Uh, over here you can see which ones are exchangeable and which ones aren't. So it looks like there are three here that were exchangeable, which ties to uh, that screen that we went through in the flow. Uh, and then if I go over to this uh, awaiting exchanges, uh, it's a little bit different. So instead of a one-to-one -one relationship for order, it's by item. Uh, so you can see here my one order has three items on this list that I need to exchange, and it's got a quantity right here. Um, and then Aquasol basically just will put a little checkbox here when they receive it. So if they receive two out of the three, uh, and then I wait for a second, and then refresh it, uh, you can see those two drop off this list here, and now it's just that one that's still awaiting return. So it's fairly easy. They can check a box just going down the line of which ones they've already received if they want to. Um, so it's, it should be fairly simple for them to mark these and keep track of them in NetSuite. Awesome. Uh, so. That's awesome. I know that, uh, you know, we've got, a, as Alan said in the meeting yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? The day before. Tuesday, yeah. Um, uh, we've had a lot of projects <laughs> this year, uh, projects. far more than we would ever try to attempt during the summer usually. <laughs> Um, and, uh, you know, this is one of those, uh, but getting production, uh, you know, helping those guys be able to meet our needs is a, is a big part of what, uh, this is going to do as well. Cause like you said, it's going to be easier for them to. Yeah. We're constantly this. trying to get them away from paper, uh, away from all those old methods that, you know, they've gotten accustomed to and they, they generally like to, uh, gravitate towards, um, they'll probably end up printing out these lists, <laughs> but, uh. <laughs> But it should be easy for us to see what it's waiting on. So, you know, if you say to Kevin, you know, I've been waiting on this stuff forever, he goes and he can look and see basically, oh, well, it looks like you still haven't sent these in from, you know, these Yeah, three your orders. parts haven't been received. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it should be pretty easy to track on our side instead of having to go to Aquasol and necessarily ask them what's going on. Yeah, um, yeah so we're not stopping them from filling other orders while we yeah. figure out what went on with this one. Yeah, and I'm not sure how you guys are submitting it now. I'm not sure if you were sending the paper in with the parts and they weren't even processing the other stuff until the box got there. Or... Yeah, so I've never been, I've never gotten a clear answer on that. Uh, <laughs> but it was like, to me, I was like, why are we emailing this in if we also have to send it in the box, yeah. you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, and they weren't sending the exchangeable parts until they got that, that mm -hmm. list. And so we did have some technicians that weren't putting that list in the box. So then when they received the parts, they literally just put them back into be remanufactured and never sent anything else out. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, uh, which, you know, they were doing what they had been instructed to do. So uh, what else on this process? Any uh, keys to success? Uh, thoughts about? Uh, should be pretty self-explanatory. I understand that there might be some issues, you know, as we're going through and starting it off about um, where certain things are and which list they're on, which category they're mm -hmm. listed under. Um, or mistakes being made and then not being able to go back to necessarily change it before you submit it. Um, There's no process that keeps them from submitting an additional order, correct? Correct. There's nothing. So they make them. a mistake. They can immediately do a second order and that order is going to get filled too. Uh, but they yes. only want to put the things on that order that were missing from their first. Correct. Um, they could exit out of the first one if they really wanted to, but then I would uh, prefer if they'd let us know so we can go in and delete the one that's still listed under draft. Okay. Uh, it won't really cause any issues. It won't come over into NetSuite, but it'll just be sitting there in Salesforce in case somebody's looking at it. Yeah, it'll be. Yeah, it'll be. Um, so I'd rather just not have the data in there than having, you know. Yeah, and I think it makes more sense to just submit a, a second agree. order. Um, and, uh, um what was the, the other thing I was going to say? It is going to take time to get to know where things are in there. We've got some lists that are very long and some that are shorter now but might get longer. Um, we've added a lot of stuff to the PAR inventory uh, that used to be you didn't have the form available to them. Yeah, I think um, there's over 160 parts on there. Yeah, so we've got the siphon pumps on there now, the, the zip ties for the, the shock jugs, the shock jug labels, the bleach tank labels, you know, a lot of stuff that... 
wasn't in the technician par form um, over the years, just had not made it into that, um, is now all there. And so if you guys see something that you think you should be ordering uh, from production, but it's not on, this, on these lists, uh, let me know and we'll get it added because the idea is to have everything in this one place um, um, for you guys. So, right. uh, and the good news is you've got inventory, end of year inventory coming up here uh, in the near future. So you'll have a great opportunity to get your van straightened up, get organized and uh, get your in first inventory order in uh, uh, to uh, start the new year. So, Yeah, awesome. All right. Uh, before we go, you want to talk a little bit about field service lightning in general, uh, the technician program, and, and what we can do to uh, uh, help resolve any issues? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I, I just want to thank you guys for you know, bearing with us as we work through this process. I know you guys have had some issues uh, for sure in the past with you know, forms being submitted and, and things going wrong. Uh, I can tell you it's as frustrating for us when we're seeing these things pop up, uh, but we'd much rather them popping up and you guys letting us know than us finding out you know, two months from now that everybody's been having issues and nobody told us anything. Right. Um, so please continue to share your concerns with us. Um, you know, let us know what error messages are coming up. That's the, you know, the fastest way for us to look into it. Uh, it's not just like, hey, I'm having an issue with this form. You know, show us a copy of, of what, uh, what the error message you're receiving is. Uh, or what so, take it, so you're saying to make, make sure you got that screenshot yeah, in there. Make sure you get a little screenshot of that, um, which that should be the fastest way for us to, to diagnose it. Um, one of the issues I know that's been in the past is uh, updating the forms. Uh, you know, we update these forms, you know, regularly when people ask for things or if we notice an error, uh, sometimes we'll end up changing the flow um, to fix that error. Uh, so it's just a good idea to, you know, either log out, clear your data, you know, refresh it every so often so that you're always getting updated copies of the forms uh, mm -hmm. in the event that something's been changed. Uh, so I think those are the, are the biggest, um, you know, things that, that would, uh, would help you guys, would help us out. Um, I know FSL is still growing. Uh, there are certain things that aren't supported in the flows right now, which make it a little bit harder on uh, this, the you know, the systems team uh, to get it working for you guys. Um, but, you know, they're always releasing new uh, features and stuff like that. So we're hoping uh, as we go, you know, formulas and other stuff will be supported in FSL Mobile yeah. uh, soon. Sweet. And, yeah, so I think the big takeaway uh, is kind of what we've been uh, preaching from the very beginning when we had that first meeting in Central Texas with the guys is, you know, report issues in, take the screenshot, tag at tech support. And then as I've been saying more recently, you know, take ownership of that error, own that error, be like, okay, this is my error. I'm going to work with the systems team to resolve it so that you stay engaged in that thread. Because I think one of the issues we were having is people were reporting it, but then they disappear. Yeah. And so Neil or Wes or you do something that sh should in theory fix it. Uh, yes. You don't hear anything back that there's still a problem, uh, but then 15 days later, I'm going, hey, this guy hasn't submitted any forms in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, so so make sure you tag at tech support. Um, that'll include both uh, you know, myself, Neil, and Wes. Uh, I see all those issues coming in. I try to keep track of them all. Uh, I for sure keep track of them until I see somebody start responding on them. Uh, and then I try to check up as we go. Um, you know, sometimes you know, we ask people if it solves their issues and we don't hear back for you know, days or a week later. Um, yeah. which I get it, you guys are busy too, um, but it, most likely if it's affecting you, it's affecting somebody else as well. Yeah. Uh, and I can tell you <laughs> when we don't respond for a little bit of time, uh, we're probably still dealing with the same issue. Uh, some of these issues, you know, take a, a long way for us to look through. Uh, there's a lot of different permission sets, you know, license roles, uh, issues in the flows that we are looking at. Uh, so sometimes we are, you know, fixing these things for a long time or, or running through everything. And I think a really important thing to hit, and we talked about this briefly in our last conversation, is that, you know, a lot of the cause of these errors is the complexity of the back end of the experience. So what we're doing is we're trying to make it as simple for the technician as possible, but in doing so, we're creating formulas and workflows and, and, and things that might get discombobulated, uh, for lack of a good term. <laughs> and so uh, the best thing that they can do for a, having a simple experience is to uh, 
work hard to resolve these errors because that's going to increase the confidence that we can work through the problems and we can add additional layers of complexity uh, because if there's an error, we know that our field is going to work well with the systems team to solve it rather than just point fingers and complain that it doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. So like, like I said, the formulas don't necessarily work in field service mobile, but they do in the other part. So sometimes we've built them with formulas and then we have to kind of go back and backtrack when it doesn't work on the mobile app. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it leads to, you know, some added complexity. So, um, I mean, you guys don't need to look at this flow really, but you can see here there's, there's a lot of different actions and decisions going on in this uh, to make that simple form on your end work and work correctly. Uh, so, you know, if something goes wrong, there's obviously a lot of places where we'd have to look in this flow right. uh, to see what the issue is, um, which is why it's important, you know, when we ask you guys, we know what options you picked or, or what you put right. on that page, what was the page before it that led you there. Um, so it's able, so we're able to easily pinpoint in the flow where we should be looking around uh, before we look at the, you know, the bigger flow overall. Um, and then we decide to start using 180 gallon tanks instead of 170 gallon tanks and yeah, it all and changes. You guys, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, no, let's do this differently now. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then obviously, uh, say, um, there's, you know, obviously there's a lot of steps here. So there's a possibility that we just built something wrong straight out of the gate and we won't necessarily know unless you pick a certain combination of, you know, choices that you know you guys make but we can only test yeah. you know so often and so many different things before yeah and that actually brings up and i, I probably will uh, cut this part uh, and just use it for the service and repair technicians uh, i know there's been a lot of issues with them trying to complete work forms cross, especially installations cross forms. reference id it generally means that they don't have access to a certain field or an object yeah. that they're trying to edit in Salesforce, that's part of the flow. Uh, I wish I could tell you what. what have we confirmed? Because I haven't thought to ask this. Have we confirmed that they are trying to submit a form and not trying to edit the work order? I haven't confirmed specifically. That as that's soon as what you explain to me what to that do. meant, I'm like, oh, they might be trying to do it, like, because we don't have work forms for SR. Yeah. So they might not be trying to use the work form. But either way, I think I've asked them that. Though. They, I, yeah, I mean, we can we can revisit it again with one of these guys. But yeah. uh, but either way, I mean, we've looked through these guys' permission sets and 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 roles, preferences, and all that stuff, and they should have access to everything. Yeah. Um, so can't figure it out. It doesn't. It seems to be an issue like for specific users, and I can't tell you like what is causing it, or if there's some common you know issue there. Um, yeah. I know like Hector's had some issues with had some issues too, install right. forms and stuff like that, which hadn't seemed to be a problem for the other installers. Damn. I, they've got the same roles. They got the same permissions. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I know that we've had some issues with crossover between SR and installations. Um, they, they generally have different license types. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, so SR has the ability to log into Salesforce, whereas, uh, and do you know quotes and stuff like that that the installers don't necessarily have. So the SR tech should have even more permissions than right. installers, and it still seems to be an issue. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we we've been problematic since the beginning, so. I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess uh, kind of final takeaway is uh, you know reporting those issues in, taking the ownership of the issue uh, to work with the systems team to resolution. Uh, right. and confirming that resolution so you guys know you can move on to an, an, another problem because uh, there's, you know, there's 150 people out there that are using our systems that might have an, an issue. And so you guys mm -hmm. do stay fairly busy uh, with that. The, the next takeaway is, um, you know, not logging in and out. Uh, and as I said in the previous video, uh, you know, don't stay logged in overnight. That's a big way in updating your, um, clearing the metadata. How often should that be? I mean, is that just if you've got an issue you should be doing that or, is, you know, once a month? Or? I mean, uh, I guess it depends on how often we're in there changing stuff. I mean, if I go into a flow and change so much as, you know, adding one option that's like a checkbox that really just doesn't do anything or just changing the text on something mm -hmm. and, I, and I save it and activate it, that's a new version of the flow that they then have to like pull in that might cause an issue if they don't. Okay. Um, so we try not to make too many changes unless there's an issue come up or, or you know, a feature request from you or the team. Uh, as you're going along. Um, but uh, I'd say, you know, 
can't hurt once a week. Yeah, uh, so maybe you just make it your- On the weekend, yeah. Yeah, end, of, end, end of the week, week, clear your metadata, once you know all your forms are uploaded, right? <laughs> yeah, like I can tell you, we don't like making changes on Friday afternoons, because- Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> Monday's gonna be terrible. Because, <laughs> you know, you guys work on the weekends too, and yeah. uh, we don't want to have some issues on the weekends where we get some limited availability trying to fix it. Yeah, um, uh, and then the, the final thing, that fix error link that we see sometimes when there's a pending upload. Don't push that, right? I, I don't like that button. <laughs> That's basically taking the decision out of your hands and letting Salesforce kind of do whatever it wants to it. Right, um, and a lot of times they just delete the form. Yeah, right? sometimes the form won't even come through at that point and then it becomes a bigger issue. So yeah, I mean, let us know what the issue is if you're having one. Uh, you know, follow up with us. Uh, you know, make sure that, you know, once we solve the problem, you know, you go back, you look, you make sure your job looks right. You know, we can verify there's a form there and it all looks mm -hmm. right. It's completed or not. Um, we want to make sure that it's, you know, working correctly from beginning to end um, so that, you know, you guys don't have to reach out to us. We don't have to change things. You, so you won't have to update us often and, and everything like that. So, um, yeah, let us know. Make sure to follow it through. I'll make sure, you know, with my team to follow through. You know, if I see a, you know, a delay in, in getting some information from them, I'll reach out to them and ask them. Uh, and I'll follow up with them on resolutions so we can kind of keep track of, you know, uh, you know, issues that might affect multiple flows that we've just been fixing one at a time or something like that. Yeah, and um, uh, I think that I, I, I look at it from kind of a balanced perspective of, you know, there's a lot of what's causing the errors has a lot of value for us long-term. It's getting through them mm -hmm. and building the confidence uh, so that we can really make that user experience like as seamless and simple as possible. Right. Um, but the really important thing is that on our way there, we've got to capture these forms because you know, it's not just uh, is the job completed. You know, our account specialists need to maybe know what happened out there uh, one of our, our other specialist teams, you know, installations or, or what our customer success, they might have a specific thing that they need to look into. Our metrics <clears throat> all kind of look at that stuff. And then on top of all of that, uh, you know, if there's an incident where someone's injured, uh, you know, it looks pretty bad if we've just got the customer requested a job and we said the job was done, but no record of what we did out there. Exactly. I mean, it's it's a whole process, you know, starting with you guys, and you never really see the end. Um, but you know, the forms you submit, fill out, you know, you know, a work form in Telegis or in uh, in Salesforce uh, that will update, you know, fields on the site if it's an installation, that kind of stuff. PMs do as well. Um, all those, you know, flow over to Netsuite and through the accounting team, you know, to start billing and that kind of stuff. Um, we're hoping that we can set up automations for the PM soon. So when you you know fill out a PM, it changes the last PM date on the site, uh, which will then then push out another job. You know, six months, a year uh, later, at this around the same time. Um, so it changes a whole lot more than just a form where we're looking to see what you guys did there. Right. Um, the whole reason you know we moved over into Salesforce and field service is not only can you know we try to make this flow a little bit easier for you. Um, hopefully on your end, so that it's easier to get the information into us, but we can also make decisions based on the answers that you guys put in and change things. Um, so we've got assets creating on the new PM form uh, under the sites in Salesforce, so, so hopefully we'll have better tracking on things like tanks and uh, controllers and that kind of stuff. Um, so there's a lot that we can do with it once we get it all in here. Uh, we just wanna make sure that it's working right before we you know, start adding a lot of pieces on top of that. And what you just said kind of sparked my memory that I don't, uh, or my mind, that I don't know that we've ever actually said this to the technicians, but the whole, I, I know we've said it in, in different ways, but we might not have made it this clear. The whole purpose of Field Service Lightning and its added capabilities and, its, and everything has nothing to do with watching over their shoulder. It has to do with us being able to take the information they're already providing us with and do more with it. Yeah, so, so it's not like we're upset there's no form because we don't know what you did. It's that we don't know what the condition of the site is for all this added stuff we want to be able to accomplish. Right, exactly. So, you know, from service and repair to installations, the techs, you know, all that uh, would generally come in. We'd have somebody manually pushing the process forward, checking up where things are. Uh, the whole point of this is to basically get rid of that 
Uh, you know, Mallory doesn't necessarily need to know when, you know, the equipment is installed, if it's automatically creating, you know, the tank install and the drum fill and all that stuff right. uh, after that fact. Um, so the whole point is to have the system be able to handle a lot of the information that you guys are giving us uh, without the manual uh, manipulation on our end. Uh, so when we're having issues, you know, it's, it's making it more manual for us instead of less manual. Right. So um, the whole part is to make it as smooth a process for, you know, the client as, as we can, you know. Just yeah. move the process as little delays, you know, waiting for somebody on our side to be like, oh, they approved this quote, oh, you know, this equipment was installed, now I need to go do this stuff. The whole point is to, you know, trigger that immediately off of, you know, the work being completed out there in the field. Yeah, and that's a, a good point. I'm glad you, you brought that up. Uh, I think it's a good place to close it. All this is really is to serve the customer. Um, you know, it's not about aggrandizement of PoolSure or its employees. It's really about, you know, meeting that mission of, of supporting, reinforcing safe swimming and swimming pools throughout our service area. Um, and, and we do that through quality service and we make sure that we're providing quality service through getting the, the forms in. So, uh, very good. Sean, anything else before we go? I can't think of anything else. Thanks for uh, having me on the video so I could uh, get a chance to talk to the team. Yeah, I appreciate you being able to make the time. And uh, guys, we're going to get this uh, PAR order inventory system rolled out. Uh, I'm going to do a quick edit of this video and share it with a few of y'all first. Um, and we're going to do some, some beta testing with a few technicians. We're not going to throw it on everybody at once. And then uh, we'll, we'll quickly get it rolled out to the rest of y'all uh, before the end of November. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.